All right, Chief. And, and I have Officer Figueroa, who's actually the school resource <coughs> officer. If you want any specifics, he can tell you what you know, his perspective is. He's uh, he's in the schools every day, you know. And, and yeah, just to let you know, when we pick our school <coughs> resource officer, we pick people who don't really believe in in the rest. And as as a as an answer to most of the problems that occur in the school, we don't believe that's the that's the answer. So we kind of handpick officers and. And, and that's what we did when we picked up Officer Figueroa. So he's there every day. So if you, anybody has any questions, he's here to answer. So. You picked a good one because he does great well, work. We appreciate having him. I would like to hear some information from Officer Figueroa because he's the one that's actually in the school. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for having me here. We, uh, we want to focus on the safety of our kids. Obviously, that's why we, we, we meet, everyone meets. and. That's our priority um, overall. I will say that um, the, the district itself, hand, handling any child in, in a group of children is a challenge in itself. And our community proves to be very challenging sometimes in dynamics and, and the problems that do happen in our community that <coughs> carry over. Um, we had one incident only with, with gang incidents on, on two Fridays ago. There was a gang incident out front um, since we've been working on that and to take care of it. And we've had, you know, we have our altercations, which the safety officers are the first line of defense. They do the most work. To be honest, they're, they're constantly involved in, in building relationships, not only breaking up fights, but they really do build relationships with these kids. We rely heavily on their relationship to let us know what's going on. A lot of times I'll ask them what's going on um, in the community because they know. And the fights that have occurred, usually um, the majority of them have been female fights. Um, and there have been a, hand, a, a number of fights off the school itself property, which is George Daniel and Ashland Avenue. Um, the majority of them were at the parking lot after school, which there's no reports. So to be transparent and truthful, there would not be a report from the police department because by the time we show up, they break up and take off running. There's no victim. There's no one flagging the police down to say, hey, I just got beat up. It's a mutual agreement between the students to fight. And they'll meet after, you know, they'll say, hey, I'll meet you at George Daniel, and we'll fight. And they meet there, they fight by the time, you know, the sirens, they hear them coming, they all take off running. So that's, that's the truth. Um, once they get to George Daniel, they'll take off running. So there's not going to be victims, they're not going to be actual, but there are calls. So that's something that the police department has an actual tracking of where you could see the amount of calls to fights that have occurred. Um, you'll have parents calling, hey, there's a fight in progress at George Daniel. Those are numbers that we'll be able to, to quantify better than just um, speculation or, or, you know, word of mouth saying, hey, I heard there was a fight today. Some of them are verbal altercations, and again, and to clarify, I think um, there was a mentioning I, I was surrounded by 20 students and I was in fear of my life. I was not. Um, there were six kids that surrounded me in front of the building. They refused to leave. They were from the new um, the Success Academy. They just didn't want to get off the property. They want to hang out and meet the kids. They didn't surround me um, to kill me. I wasn't afraid of my life, but they, they were testing. They, they wanted to know if they refused to leave, what was the police going to do? And as being a resident here, and as, as Chief Rivera said, I really care about these kids. And if anyone knows me, they know that I love the community. I really do. Um, and I'm not going to put my hands on a, on a child and use force and hurt them over them refusing to leave the property. And I, had, I did not do so. Um, other officers may have been able and been justified at that point. I did not. Um, I kind of asked them to leave several times. And I think the last time I kind of said, guys, um, this could get bad if you don't leave and you choose to walk towards me to fight me because they had closed their distance. And I think at that point they realized, well, officer, we're not going to touch you. Our intent is not to fight you. Um, we're going to leave because they realized that um, it, they were backing me into, into my, towards my vehicle. Um, I think the, the statements got confused with the, the officer that was at George Daniel during a football game. And there was a fight and they had surrounded his vehicle and he, he didn't see a fight because, again, once he showed up, the fight had stopped. And they kind of mentioned to him, hey, um, what are you doing here? And he said, I thought there was a fight. No one got it. No one was fighting. No one made a complaint. Um, however, once he cleared the group and pulled up to me to talk to me, to ask me what happened at the game, um, someone ended up pulling out a gun and everyone took off. That was not reported because no one called the police. We were not aware of that incident until the next day. Um, and it was an adult who was from the community, you know, offsite was not a student from the school who pulled the gun out. Um, but they're trying, and I, I will be honest that the, the community is testing, and when I say community, more of the gang community, um, two adults did attempt to get into the building. That is true. They, they came to lunch, they had tried to get in, 
the safety um, team was aware. They advised me that these people, they showed me pictures. These people are known gang members, and they're on Facebook showing guns. Um, and that was the gentleman that pulled the gun out at the George Daniel Stadium. They didn't get an entrance into the building. Um, the, secure, the, the secretary at the front stopped them. They left the building. But it just raises our, our heightened sense of security. And I've advised the safety team. You know, they're doing a great job. And I'll be honest, they really are. Our safety team is doing everything they can. They're getting their, they're, they're on the ground, they're listening, and they're constantly trying to be proactive to stop fights before happening, um, to make sure that we're interjecting and we're sitting them down to talk to, to them beforehand. But um, I think that that's, that's the best that I can give, like statistically, where I know a lot of people have asked me um, the number of fights. You know, there is the reported number that Mr. Hardy has provided, which is true and accurate, from inside the building. And then there's the number of fights that have happened outside of the building that are not being reported because they're off-site. Um, but that would be something you would look towards the police department to get that number, which we can provide. What is considered off-site? Off-site, I, I say off-site, it's anything <coughs> across the street, of, off the property of Lorraine High. So from Ashland the entire, Avenue. all of anything that's off of the property itself of Lorraine High School. So Ashland Avenue, um, any street. As they're walking home. Yeah, as they're walking home. Um, and George Daniel would be off-site, mm -hmm. but yet it's still school property, to my understanding. Mm -hmm. um, but it is off-site because it didn't happen inside the building. So if you were to ask me how many fights happened inside the building, I would say about 10, mm -hmm. which is what was reported. If you'd ask me how many fights have happened in total on school property, it'd be closer to about 20. Um, but again, there's not even police reports because there's no victims. So we haven't identified them. Most of the time the safety officers find out after a video is circulated and someone will show us a cell phone video and say, hey, look, there was a fight last night. These two girls fought. We don't have any. But now gang fights, we've had none. There have been no fights on school property or in the school that have been related to clear gang violence other than two Fridays ago um, where those three separate groups at the school across the street. And they're easily identifiable. You could see them because they were separate. And um, they threw up their gang signs and did their thing, but they were handled. And, and as, as the chief echoed, um, they, it is progressive. It's, it's moving in the right direction where the school itself has suspended. Um, so if there's a perception or, or rumors going around that they're not being suspended, that's not true. They are. It may not be to the effect or the policy that was, may have been um, previous, but the kids are being suspended. They're, they're, you can clearly look up those records and see. Um, but there is a challenge. It's, it's just a little bit of a challenge in, in getting them all to understand that we're not going to fight. Mr. Hardy did have a heart-to-heart -heart with them uh, this past week to say, look, guys, stop, stop fighting. Don't bring any of the off-street you know, problems from the community to the school. If you do, there will be consequences. Um, and that was a statement that was echoed through the students, which they even mentioned to me, like, I'm not fighting here because I don't want to bring the drama. So that's, that's about it. How is our, uh, I mean, so far, we talk primarily about the high school. Uh, our grade schools and our junior highs are. I, I similar. yeah. Do you, do you get any any type of information on that? I'm mostly at, like I said, I'm mostly at the high school. Yeah. Um, it takes a lot of my time because it's the most obviously the highest population in the buildings. But the, I haven't had any major issues at any of the elementaries. Um, the the most severe issues we've had have been external where you know, we locked down Admiral King a couple weeks ago because of a gun call that was completely unrelated. It was uh, down the street. Um, so that was probably the most serious issue we've had. Uh, middle schools, it, you know, Facebook drama, <coughs> girls arguing, but nothing where it's to the point of the effect that I've had to go and handle. Um, and I say I haven't had any drug calls in the school to date, um, which is a good thing. There's been no drugs issues here. Yet, like I said, as of today, I haven't had any issues with that or any felonies, which mostly I handle the felonies <coughs> and drugs because the safety officers handle all the other issues. So I have not. Since I've been on the board, I've been, I think I've been on the board nine years, and we, we spent a lot of years trying to create this atmosphere because the first thing that anybody wants to know is, is their child safe when they go to school? So we try to, and, and I'm hoping tomorrow, I'm hoping that your meeting goes well with uh, with Mr. Hardy, and, and, I, and I hope that everything's cooperative. But uh, I guess I have to wait and see. Thank you. Overall, just to know, um, as a resource, I'm available. So if, if there's questions or things with specific families, 
Like I heard the, uh, the, the young lady express her concern for her child. I wasn't aware of that. I try to make myself available um, to be involved. So if you feel that someone needs to contact, send them to me, refer them to me. I am at the high school. They can meet me here and I'll try to address and help them out as much as I can. Working with the administration, um, which I think we're, we're, we're doing a pretty good job communicating and be able, hopefully be able to handle and resolve all the issues that the community has.